Pimp a Butterfly, generally referred to as one of the greatest rap projects of all time. In fact, I've seen it in discussions for the best album of all time, and I genuinely believe that both of these takes are outrageous. In early 2015, Captain Zone Kendrick Lamar released his third studio album, To Pimp a Butterfly, a jazz-infused rap project speaking on the racial inequality and flaws of American politics. To Pimp a Butterfly released more than just an hour 15 minutes worth of music. He released a staple for the genre and a real talking point. And this is where the problem begins for me. The project released three years after his heavily nominated Good Kid Mad City, and when you even stack To Pimp a Butterfly against that, I think it falls short. Good Kid Mad City is still charting to this day and gave a perfect example that you can have a story to tell and still do well commercially. Albums like The Weeknd's 2020 Project After Hours and J. Cole's 2014 Forest Hill Drive are further examples of this outside of Kendrick. Kendrick totally nailed the storytelling and theme on To Pimp a Butterfly, but he fell short on the music itself. Diving into the tracklist, I think you displays this point very well. The song is just not sonically pleasing in the slightest. You tackles the subject of alcoholism, but it just does it in the wrong way in my opinion. I think everybody can agree that alcoholism is ugly. I think we all know someone that has been affected by this awful disease, and Kendrick goes the extra mile to make this song reflect how hideous it is. The song is made to be sonically unappealing. Now I understand why. It's similar to We Cry Together on his latest album, Miss Morale and Big Steppers, but I just don't see any reason to return to the song. It's cool and it's interesting for what it is, but at the end of the day, it's just a skip and it kinda interrupts the tracklist and the overall flow of the project. And I don't really think that's a positive trade-off for Kendrick here. We've seen a number of recent artists make genuinely good tracks that tackle addiction and alcoholism, including Hold My Liquor by Kanye West, which speaks on the struggles of alcoholism and how it can affect one's daily life. Kanye does a good job portraying how alcohol controls them and how it can jeopardize those around him. He does all this while creating a good track and it's one that listeners want to come back to. The Weeknd does something similar in his 2015 collaboration with Lana Del Rey. On Prisoner, he utilized a very dark vibe and good dark instrumentals to highlight his addictions as he claims that he's a prisoner to him. Both of these songs have high replay value and add to the overall track list while making a statement about the struggles of alcohol and addiction. To make matters even worse, we've seen Kendrick himself make a great song about the struggles of alcoholism. That of course being his 2012 track Swimming Pools, where he discusses the social pressures that cause one to want to drink. So none of these songs tackle the same topic as you, but they show that such an ugly topic can be portrayed in a sonically pleasing manner and in a way that actually makes listeners want to come back. And I think that might be a bit more impactful than creating a song that highlights how hideous the addiction is. Another track that displays the meaning over appeal problem is the for free interlude. This is just an interlude so it gets a bit more of a pass, but Kendrick's lyrics are just not made to be enjoyed by the masses. The beat is very interesting and has some real appeal, but Kendrick repeating this, this decade free, free doesn't really do it for me or anyone else for that matter. Now this is just two tracks and I don't want to say that two tracks being misses ruins an album, but they go to show the overall point. There are a number of tracks with potential, like the interlude, and there are a number of tracks where I think Kendrick took the wrong approach, like with you. This is where personal preference really starts to step in, but I mean storytelling and theme aren't the only things that matter. The problem with this being a storytelling album with a strong message is that Kendrick had already done this on a much higher level. Three years prior to the release of To Pimp a Butterfly, Kendrick released Good Kid Mad City, which just recently broke the record for the longest charting rap album ever. So Kendrick has shown the ability to discuss deep topics and still make a musical experience to come back to before. And this is where the question of what makes an album great comes up. What's great to one certainly doesn't have to be great to another. When looking at projects, rap specifically, I think a few things make a project great. Societal impact, the music quality, a strong overall theme, 
and lasting value of creation and innovation all rank as some of the most important factors for a great rap project. When I think of societal impact, there may be no album that was more impactful than To Pip a Butterfly in the grand scheme of things. This was so powerful in American politics and racial inequality in America, and I think that this point is the main basis for To Pimp a Butterfly being the greatest album of all time. But again, that is only one of four main factors in making an album great. It needs more. Moving on, we have a strong overall theme. I would certainly argue that To Pimp a Butterfly has that. The theme is pretty consistent and it's easy to follow throughout, outside of I, which was actually released as a single beforehand, so it gets a little shaky there, but outside of that, A plus to Kendrick Lamar on that. Having these two traits at an elite level practically makes a classic, but we aren't talking about classics, we're talking about the best rap project of all time. So while To Pimp a Butterfly hits the first two factors, it's debatable where it lands for the second two. The first being lasting value and innovation. The project features a jazz rap fusion sound that is exhibited well on tracks like These Walls and Wesley's Theory. I can't say that the influence of the sound is really all that strong though. I'll play Devil's Advocate and I'll say that this isn't as important to, as the other factors. At least not to me. Look at Whole Lotta Red or 808's and Heartbreak. Widely considered to be two of the most influential projects in rap. Whole lot of red inspired the opium sound, one that has run hip hop over the past few years. Without whole lot of red, who knows where the sound of rap would be early in the 20s decade. For 808s, the use of harmonies and auto tunes inspired a generation of Travis Scott's, Don Tolliver's, Juice World's, and many more. Some of the biggest rappers in the game today take a ton of inspiration from 808s. Yet who seriously considers that to be one of Kanye's best albums? Most have it as a bottom half project despite it being debatably his most influential, which could probably be the topic for another video. So while being influential and having a lasting value in the genre is important, and To Pimp a Butterfly does fall short in this, I don't think it's as big of a deal as the other factors. That being said, the fourth and final factor, the music quality itself, is the major question here. As I mentioned with the examples of you and for free, the quality of the music is far too debatable for To Pimp a Butterfly to be the greatest rap project of all time. There are a number of incredibly strong tracks sprinkled throughout the track list that include King Kunta, All Right, and The Black and Berry, but are there enough of them? I personally don't think so. Not for the greatest rap album of all time. I'm going to use streaming numbers to display my point, which I usually wouldn't do. I don't think streaming numbers are the best way to objectify good music against lesser stuff, as can be seen by comparing Drake as a rapper to basically anyone else, but in this specific case, I think it stands as strong evidence. Look at Kendrick Lamar's discography alone. His debut album, Section 80, has three tracks with over 100,000 streams. 100,000 is no small number, but for a rap legend like Kendrick Lamar, it is very attainable for his hits. Then you move to Good Kid Mad City, which has 10 such tracks. The Black Panther soundtrack that Kendrick led has 8, and all of them, including the intro of Blood, which is basically just him talking, has over 100,000 streams. His most recent album, which released about 20 months ago, already has a total of 7. Even an album with no name, and all the tracks do not have a name either, has one. So I think you get my point here about Kendrick being able to pull off these numbers. So how many does To Pimp a Butterfly have? Five. Five tracks with over 100,000 streams. Again, it's impressive overall, but when you zoom out and see that this project is only streamed more than Section 80, his debut album, Mr. Round The Big Steppers, a project that received a ton of hate and was only released last year has more. Damn and Good Kid Mad City obviously have more. In fact, they doubled the total of To Pimp a Butterfly. Not a great look. I believe the most important aspect of music is the replay value. If I don't want to come back to it, then I don't care how politically significant it is. I don't return to a whole lot of red much, so I don't pay much attention to the fact that it's heavily inspirational. Obviously, everyone is going to have their own opinions on what is most important, but I find it hard to call this the greatest album of all time when the majority of people listen to four other Kendrick albums more. Like, a lot more. Like, I do think there is a serious question here. If people aren't staying tuned in under a decade after it's released, 
who is going to be listening 30, 40, 50 years down the road? Think of guys like Biggie and Tupac that ran the 90s. Their music is still huge nowadays as they pushed boundaries and found commercial success. Even into the 20s, their music is still streamed heavily and they are considered rapped goats. Looking back on Kendrick, I find it hard to believe that people will mention To Pimp a Butterfly before they mention Good Kid Mad City, and maybe even Damn. To Pimp a Butterfly wasn't a staple of the 2010s like his other works. Not on a commercial level at least, and I think that with time there is a chance that To Pimp a Butterfly fades away. Maybe it doesn't, and people continue to keep it as a timeless project, but I guess really only time's gonna tell. At the end of the day, I do think dragging on to Pimp a Butterfly as much as I have is really only okay for a video like this. If you're just talking about the album, there's much more good to say than bad, and I don't want to sound like a hater or anything. I do believe that to Pimp a Butterfly is a top 50-ish rap project of all time. At the end of the day, music is hard to objectify, and whether or not you even can objectify music is probably a good topic for another video. That being said, I think it's hard to objectively call To Pimp a Butterfly anything less than a classic. It simply has too much impact, influence, and respect for something like that. I think it should also be equally hard to call it the best rap project of all time though. It needs to really hit on all cylinders and the replay value simply isn't there. How can it be the greatest rap project of all time when it isn't even Kendrick's best, as that award would go to Good Kid Mad City, which is the real K-Dot album that has a shot to be the greatest rap project of all time. And who knows, maybe I'll debate that in a future video. Peace.